Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we are taking a train across Canada. We are starting in Montreal and we'll spend a few days in Toronto, Winnipeg, Edmonton, Jasper, and finishing up in Vancouver. It's winter and we have packed our warmest attire to bundle up along the way. You'll be surprised by how much there is to do in Canada in the winter time. So grab a beverage of your choice and ride along with us as we start our adventure exploring the historic city of Montreal. We have arrived in Montreal, very excited to be here. We're staying here at the Hotel Le Dauphin. And we got this hotel online, took a chance on it, had never heard of it. It's pretty nice. Uh, we paid about a hundred US dollars for the room for the night. And uh, I think that was well worth it. The internet here is blazing fast. So we are uploading and downloading like crazy all the footage and stuff we have. But something interesting they have in this hotel, I've never seen before, they have a Mac computer on the desk for you to use. And let me show you that, that's kind of interesting. Right there, I don't know that we'll use it, but uh, but we do have it. It is cold here, but we're about to go head out and try to find some Christmassy stuff. I've got my winter hat on, too bad. I lost that Montreal's Expo hat in Alaska because this is the one city I could wear it on and be very proud. Everyone would stop me and say, go Expos probably. But uh, we're gonna go out, find some dinner, find some Christmas stuff, and see if there's anything good to eat, to eat here in Montreal. All right, we are here at the place in Toronto where they're celebrating the Olympics. They were held here in 1976, and I am a big Olympic fan, so I wanted to come see this. Uh, if you know who the standout performer was in the 1976 Olympics, leave me a comment. Let me know who you think it was. There's a big cauldron behind us with the flame, and, that, and they've got it all lit up with some kind of like some fake, uh, fake fire, I guess. That's pretty cool. But it is really cold out here. It kind of feels like good Olympic weather, even though the Summer Olympics were here. <laughs> now it feels like the Winter Olympics. It's about 20 degrees, so I hope you're nice and warm watching this. And I, I haven't had the heart yet to tell Allie that when we get to Edmonton later in this trip, it's going to be even colder than this. So <laughs> let's, uh, let's hope that goes well. But right now, we're going to brave the cold, go try to find some more Christmassy stuff to do in Montreal. So we're walking around Chinatown in Montreal, French-speaking Montreal, and we saw a Mexican restaurant. So of course we had to pop in there. Anytime you can get Mexican restaurant, especially on a cold night like this, it's the thing to do. Let's go see how good it is.
Okay guys, that is a wrap on Montreal. We are headed back to Toronto. We're getting ready to hop on the Canadian, ride it across the country. Waiting to board here in Montreal. We picked up a subway sub in the train hall here because we're not sure what the food is on this train, if we can get food, uh, what's offered. So we got this just in case. We'll see if we need it. Checking out the bathroom here on the train from. Checking out the bathroom here on the train, and we were recently in the business class on this same train, and the bathroom is exactly the same. So, whether you're in business or economy, you're gonna get the same bathroom, no difference there. One interesting thing though that I've never seen on any train or plane in my life is there's two bathrooms in this car, in the back of the car, and one is labeled men, women, and children, and the other one is labeled just for women. So women, you're in luck. If you want a bathroom all to yourself, on this train you will get it. Let's, let's see what this looks like though.
10 minutes. We ask you to remain seated until the train comes to a complete stop and don't forget any personal belongings behind. If you're connecting with train 75 or 87, 75, this train, sorry, is going to turn into 75, so you might stay on board. Please remain at the seat you're on now and wait for the new service managers okay to switch seats so we can clean the train and increase the chances of departing on time. If you're connecting with train 87, please go down to the station and follow the station staff directions to boarding train 87. Thank you. Got in last night late here in Toronto, but we are staying at the Double Tree just here over my shoulder. It is a downtown area, so now we're gonna go explore and see uh, the Eaton Center, the CN Tower, and see what else the city has to offer. We're at the Hockey Hall of Fame here in Toronto, Canada, and I visited this as a young boy, and now, quite a few years later, I'm back. I'm bringing Allie to show her all the Red Wings that are in the Hockey Hall of Fame.
So let's take a look at what it looks like during the night. This is the curtain and this is the only thing between you and the hallway. So you've got those snaps, you can snap your curtain together for full privacy. And it's a nice thick curtain so people can't see through it. And this is the back here of the seat. This little pocket is great for storing your phone, glasses, things like that. But the top part of the seat is flipped up and you can use it as a bench for storing your bags. And I used the little hook to keep it from <laughs> flipping off while it was, as the train car was moving while we were traveling, I didn't want that bag to fall on me while I was asleep. So I put it on the top part of the bench area here. Now uh, the downstairs you have access to the window in the lower berth and you have a nice shade that you can pull down. Um, one thing I didn't like about it is that the shade wasn't really thick. So it wasn't super darkening. It is obviously dark at night, but as soon as it gets light outside, you can start to see that fairly quickly. So you have, you see these attendant buttons again, you can see these, you have access to them during the day and at night as well. And then this is what the seat looks like during the day, it's flipped down. And on the other side, you saw it was flipped up to use as a storage area at night for your things that you can't fit underneath the seat. Again, you don't have a ton of space down there when the beds are made up. So just keep that in mind with how much stuff you bring. And again, the fan you have access to, which is really nice to have this for a little bit of air circulation because you just have this little cubby area when you're in the upper or lower berth. So it's nice to be able to access the fan and have a little bit of airflow. It's a nice wide area. It's probably about the size of a twin size bed, a typical twin size bed. And that's kind of what the armrest looks like there. So let's take a look at the upstairs where Rob is. He's got this nice net area. You know, he likes to have his snacks up there. He's got his water, his phone, headphones, all that good stuff stored up in that netting. It's really nice and thick. And you can see all of the mechanical <laughs> elements that go there. He's got a fan up there as well, which is really nice because as you'll note, he does not have a window up here. This is what the curtains look like in the upstairs. Essentially, it's the same as down below. It's just fastens at the top and the bottom. There's a fan on both sides, and he also has a nice pocket there if he has more stuff to store. So there's a ton of storage space um, in the upper bunk as well as the lower. There's lots of places to put things. They gave us a nice little chocolate when we got on, which we may or may not have consumed right away. Then you've got all of your towels and you've got a washcloth and a hand towel. And then you have these um, regular bath towels, which are really hard to get out of the bag with one hand. And Rob's doing a pretty good job here <laughs> getting that out. But you've got a bag of those. If you should need more, then you can probably ask your attendant. You get a little bar of soap that you can reuse if you like, but you do get two bath towels per person. So that's actually quite a lot, I think, um, for the the long ride, if you're gonna be on for all, all the days all the way across. Rob's gonna show you here now the headroom. So he's sitting up. Look at how much space there is still with him sitting straight up. Quite a bit of space up there as well. As you can see in the middle, there's a little bit less just because that bar is there, but the rest of it, he's got a couple inches of extra space. It's nice and long too. Uh, so you've got a nice length there. It doesn't feel like you're kind of stuck. There's lots of room to move and lots of room to store things. You can turn that light on and off on both sides of the upper berth as well. And then you've got your ladder right outside the door there. And like I said, we're in number three, so we're right across from the wall. We're not across from another person. One and two face each other and they are across from other people. So there's two ladders, one on each side. On the, th the number three where we are, there's only one ladder. And the curtains, they are a little bit hard to slide open and shut. You kind of have to forcefully do it but I do love that they are nice and thick and they do have these snaps. So if people walk by and just kind of, uh, you know, 
graze them or whatever, they won't come open if you have them um, sealed shut. So let's take a look at the bathroom uh, situation. So there is a men's bathroom and a women's bathroom and they are actually quite different. So let's take a look at the ladies bathroom first. Don't forget to lock the door always. There is an attendant button in here. It is not marked as attendant button, but I'm pretty sure that that's what that button was. I didn't want to hit it to find out. We got two uh, hooks here to hang anything, toiletry bag or anything like that while you're in there getting all set up. It's a real nice space where the commode is. It does have this frosted window in there, but it does have that little area that's not frosted, which is kind of odd. Uh, nice spacious sink. And you just press and it comes on and stays on for a short time and then you just have to press it again. There's me high. And then look at this, there's a little vanity area. You've got a seat in here and a little counter area to set some things and a nice big mirror um, to get ready in. So there's a ton of space in here, it's really nice. And the paper towels took me a minute to find because they were above my head. Usually I don't have to look up for paper towels, but they are in here. So just kind of keep that in mind. So let's go over to the men's bathroom. Rob took the camera in there so we can take a peek. Now notice it's quite different. It's actually quite a bit smaller than the ladies bathroom. Um, you've got the attendant button in there and then see that's all the space. It's just the commode and the sink in this one. You do have the little shelf and the hooks in here too, but there's not a ton of space, not as big as the ladies. All right, so last thing to take a peek here is the shower. Of course, be sure to lock that door. You've got a couple of hooks in here to hang things, either clothes or a toiletry bag. You've got a little bench area where you can sit, which you might want to do because if you shower when the train is moving and some place to set other things as well, your towel and other things. The shower is pretty decent. The temperature was really good. Um, the flow was not bad at all. It does come out in one stream instead of more of the shower uh, spray that you're used to, but there are also bars inside um, to hang on to while you're showering. Again, you're going to be pretty <laughs> moving around quite a bit in the train if the train is moving. There's another trash bin on the other side and also another bar to hang on to as well as another hook and a mirror so that you can um, see and make sure you're uh, dressed correctly <laughs> before you head back out. Um, so it's pr pretty basic. Um, it's probably about the same size as a shower uh, on Amtrak if you've done that before. So this is what our seats look like during the day. Two seats like this facing each other. We can actually, there's enough room for both of us to sit on each side. So that's really nice. So we were looking for some place outside the room to come and hang out. So we came to the upper level of the dome car. We have the whole place to ourselves here for some reason. So we're gonna hang out up here, enjoy the views and relax in this very comfortable seats they have. All right, so this is the lower level of the dome car, family style seating here, very comfortable seats down here as well with the table space in front of you. All right, so now we are in the lower level of 
the park car hanging out down here. It's kind of like a living room. It's so nice and so comfortable. Um, they have reading lights and cup holders and really just a comfortable place to hang out. Let me show you around. All right, we are at our first fresh air break here in Capriol, and it is quite chilly out. I think it degrees in the 20s Fahrenheit. So not gonna be out here too long. We're gonna walk around a little bit, stretch my legs, and then we're gonna head to dinner. So I'm looking forward to that. But as you can see, there's still a little bit of sunset behind me. You can't see me very well, but you can see the sunset back there. So uh, we're gonna walk around a little bit here and stretch our legs.
All right, we have stopped here at Sioux Lookout. It's only our second fresh air break. First one of the day, so we're walking around here, stretching our legs a little bit, getting a fresh air. We only have about 15 minutes here, so it's, uh, it's not too bad. I thought it was gonna be colder, so as you can see, I'm extremely bundled up, <laughs> but it's not that bad here. have arrived in Winnipeg and it's 7 30 at night we have until 9 o'clock at night but uh, they're gonna close the platform for a little while so if we don't get back to the train by 8 we have to stay off until 9 o'clock so we're gonna take a quick spin around here look at the station it's supposed to be very pretty and then try to get back on the train and uh, do a few things on there before they shut the platform down otherwise if we miss it we just have to wait an extra hour and then we can get back on at nine o'clock. now it's a new city for us so uh, don't have a lot of time but we're gonna see what's here I kind of wish the Winnipeg Jets were playing tonight I don't think they are but if they were I'd probably sneak over for a quick period of the game
All right, we have made it to Saskatoon, Saskatchewan. I think this is my first time ever in Saskatchewan. Got a little bit of snow going right here. It's a beautiful day. Uh, train's gonna be here for about an hour. They're gonna put some water on, refuel, uh, change out some people maybe, but yeah, we've got a little hour to explore. I don't think we can go very far up there right here on the platform, and it is pretty chilly uh, for us. But this is Saskatoon, and we're gonna stretch our legs. There's a really nice kind of walking track here, so it's a good place to walk. We can walk the whole length of the train. I'll show you. So if you want to get some exercise, this might be the place to do it.
All right, we made it to Edmonton. It is a little after nine o'clock. Got in a little bit late. Okay, we are in the ice district here in Edmonton and they have a little something called Snow Way Out. It's a maze and lots of other fun snow and ice related things to do here. So we're gonna hop in here and see if we can make our, our way out in and out of the maze and see what other kind of fun stuff we can do. All right, so one of the fun things to do in Edmonton is to visit the West Edmonton Mall. It is the largest mall in North America. Currently, they have a water park, an NHL science ice skating rink, and so much more to explore. So we're gonna check it out today.
All right, so we left Edmonton right at midnight, 12.01, and got on the train, woke up early this morning, and we are in Jasper, and we have a couple hours here. They closed the platform, and so we have to stay off the train basically until 9 a.m. before we get back on for brunch. So we're gonna walk around Jasper here. It's so pretty um, as the sun will be rising in a little bit and the lights are still up from the holidays. So I'm gonna walk around and explore. And as you can see from my breath, it's obviously cold here. <laughs> so let's go see what's around town. been on the train now for four days and three nights and had the same train food quite a bit so we had a chance here in Jasper to get off and get some food from a restaurant so we, we picked Kim Hortons and uh, we <laughs> got some coffee, drinks and biscuits. We're going to try that out here. We had this in Toronto so we already know it's pretty good. Here in Jasper, just got a little breakfast. Let me explain how things work here in Jasper because it's different than anything else that's uh, ever happened. When you get up at about 6.30 here in Jasper, they do serve a continental breakfast. And then you're supposed to go into town. You can do that from about 6.30 to 9. We just went to Tim Hortons, got some kind of a real breakfast. And then when you get back on the train, they serve, instead of breakfast or lunch, they serve a brunch. And that runs from 9.30 to about 12.30 or 1. So then you have to hold yourself till dinner. So they basically serve two full meals and a continental breakfast on this day. But you do have time to get off and get a, a real breakfast in Jasper. So you can kind of plan that out however you want. We chose to eat here at Tim Hortons. And then we're going to eat a late brunch about noon and then also a late dinner tonight. I forgot to mention how cold it is here in Jasper. It is eight degrees this morning. Feels like two degrees. <laughs> but they say it's a dry cold. Uh, that's supposed to make us feel better. I don't know, there's a little bit of wind too. There's a little wind. <laughs> it's about as comforting as when they say it's a dry heat in Arizona. <laughs> not, not good. So we're walking back to the train right now because it's pretty cold. I don't know that it's as cold as it was in Montreal when we were there last week. Oh but, gosh. <laughs> but it is pretty cold. So uh, Jasper is beautiful though. You can see the mountain now and we're gonna look at that as we walk back to the train.
All right, so this is the exciting part. We are getting ready to head into the Canadian Rockies. Actually, we're sitting in them, if you can see around me. The sun is coming up, and I'm not gonna lie, I am really excited about what we are going to see today. Good morning, everyone. May I have your attention, please? On behalf of your service manager, Lynn Marcoux, in the area of Canada, it is our pleasure to welcome you aboard train number one, the legendary Canadian en route to Vancouver, British Columbia. While traveling on the Canadian, our crew is responsible for your safety and well-being. Unsafe or disrespectful behavior towards passengers or crew will not be tolerated. As we depart, we would like to draw your attention to our onboard safety instructions and policies. For passengers traveling in our economy class, we ask that you please take a few minutes to familiarize yourself with the safety pamphlet located in the seat pocket in front of you. Please make note of the emergency exits located in your car. For passengers traveling in our sleeper cars, your attendant will be there to explain the safety features of your car. And in the event of a train evacuation, the onboard crew will facilitate this process. Standing in the vestibule is not permitted. For your safety, you must wear shoes when walking on the train, and all carry-on bags must be stored in the designated area. Please be advised that smoking tobacco, e-cigarettes, and cannabis is strictly prohibited on board the train and on station platforms. Crew members will keep you informed of stops in designated smoking areas along the way. Do not hesitate to ask your crew if you have any questions regarding your safety or other questions related to the train. Local time now is 941. Thank you very much and have yourself a wonderful morning. Once again, ladies and gentlemen, I just want to welcome you aboard. This is uh, our premier day as we go through the beautiful Canadian Rockies. Uh, the one thing I just want to point out for uh, new passengers that are joining us today, and also for all other passengers on board, uh, we do ask you to please refrain from using any type of uh, sanitary wipes uh, in our toilet system, as our toilet system is uh, coming from the 50s, therefore it doesn't work well. So we appreciate if you do use any type of sanitary wipes, please you put them in our garbage. Thank you very much. We appreciate your co cooperation on this matter. Once again, thank you very much and have a good morning.
give you a, a little viewpoint of things yeah. coming up. Uh, like I said, we sure right now we're going to come to yeah. the scenic yeah. part of our trip yeah. where we see a variety yeah. of uh, I just points of interest that along the way. Yeah. 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 We all had lakes, we all had paths, lake. We are all up in Pyramid Falls, Blue River, Clearwater. So we have a lot of places to see it as we continue along during our daylight hours. Right now, we're, if you follow the mile markers on the side of the train, a mile 17.9 will indicate our entrance into British Columbia, that's the Alberta-British Columbia border. It's also known as the Continental Divide and the Yellowhead Pass. Yes. Now the Continental Divide is a division of the water in North America. Water is on the uh, BC side flow all the way into the Pacific Ocean and waters on the uh, Alberta side flow up north to Hudson Bay and all the way to various tributaries into the Atlantic area, drainage area. Right now, uh, our, we're at 3,718 feet, 1,131 meters. That's the height of the Yellowhead Pass. It has the distinction of being the lowest elevation path to get through the Rockies, so obviously it was the easiest way to get through, to get to the Pacific Ocean back in the day. So at mile 17.9, we'd like to welcome you into beautiful British Columbia, uh, also known as uh, the Yellowhead Pass. The, this border uh, is named after a uh, Métis trapper who plied his trade in this area. Uh, customary people had nicknames in those days and this uh, trapper was called Yellowhead. In French it was Ted Jones. So in honor of his uh, work in this area we call this the Yellowhead Path uh, as the English form indicate. Yes. So enjoy your uh, view as we continue on. Welcome to beautiful British Columbia. Uh, on the left hand side, shortly we'll be coming to Yellowhead Lake and I'll point the, these places out as we continue along. Thank you very much.
the left hand side. <coughs> the length of the lake is 14 kilometers. The width is 4.4 kilometers. Has an average depth of 18 feet. And a maximum depth, depth of approximately 65 feet. Loose Lake uh, is also a recreational lake. Uh, people fish on this lake. Uh, walleye, perch, uh, pickerel, typical fish, white fish, typical fish that you would see in a Canadian lake. This is a cold lake. Uh, lots of water comes down the uh, mountain and uh, deposits into the lake. We have rainbow falls and thunderfalls mm -hmm. that uh, uh, provide a lot of uh, water volume into the lake during the summertime, during the spring runoff. And at the uh, far end of the lake, that forms part of the beginning of the Fraser River uh, via the uh, North Thompson River, via the Thompson River, and via the Fraser River, it all empties out into the Pacific Ocean. So again, on the left hand side, we have the famous Loose Lake, 14 kilometers long, four, or just over 4 kilometers wide, Loose Lake on the left hand side, thank you.
like we made it to Kamloops and it's warm. It's actually like 35, 40 degrees. So this is great weather from what we've had uh, the last few days, not shivering at all. This is our last stop, last fresh air break, I think, before we get into Vancouver in the morning. So we're enjoying it. Gonna take a, a walk around and just see what we can see. But uh, actually, you can't really leave the platform here because it's, it's, it's live tracks. So we're gonna get some steps in, I think, and stretch our legs. But uh, we had a great dinner tonight. I had uh, chicken, which I'd really been wanting. So we're all set, gonna walk around hit the bed, and when we wake up, we'll be in Vancouver. All right guys, we made it to Vancouver. It is early, and we are gonna to try to check into our hotel in a little bit, and then try to explore the city. All right, so we came over to the hotel um, to try to check in. It's 8 a.m. <laughs> by the time we were off the train, so we thought we'd come over here, sit in the lobby, hang out for a little while till they let us check in. But we do have gold status um, with Hilton. We are at the Hilton of Vancouver downtown, and they did let us check in early, so they gave us a room. I'm going to give you a quick tour here. We did pay 161, including taxes and such, uh, for this room, but it's a really nice room let me give you a quick tour here so this is the bathroom which is really nice and big a nice big sink with plenty of space to set our toiletry bags the commode and of course this tub is really quite nice I'm pretty sure I'm gonna take a bath in there because that looks like a nice tub perfect for a bath now it <laughs> the bathroom is on this end which is kind of interesting and the bedroom is all the way down here um, so we'll take a look at that in just a second but here's the rest of the room here kind of the living area this is kind of a little closet mudroom getting dressed area never seen an area quite like that before in a hotel room because this is actually like a soft bench that you can sit on and then of course put your pair of boots dirty shoes and such right there I guess so you don't get the room all dirty it does have a refrigerator which is quite nice it's a pretty good size one for a hotel refrigerator. It also has a microwave, ice bucket, and the kettle, which I love. And then it also has an espresso machine, Nespresso. If you're into Nespresso, they have that. And nice couch here with somewhere to put your feet and a lovely desk. That's a really nice big desk to sit and download videos from our trip so far. <laughs> and then this nice area here with a TV and there's a closet in here it's a small closet and there's a matching small closet in the bedroom as well and then this is the room here so it's kind of a odd configuration to have the bedroom on one end and the bathroom all the way over there and around the corner but this is a nice room it's a good price for downtown Vancouver it was only a mile from the it's only about a mile from the train station we were gonna walk but of course it's raining and the driver on the way over said uh, the nickname we have for Vancouver is rain Coover. <laughs> we said it must be kind of like Seattle <laughs> so uh, we're gonna go out and explore anyways it looks really good all the people we've met so far have been really lovely so we're excited to see what else there is here in the city Time for lunch here in Vancouver and it has been raining for days and days and days, torrential rain, so we decided to kind of stay in. We went to walk around the neighborhood. There's a lot of great Asian restaurants and we decided to try a new little place called Japa Dog and they've got Japanese style hot dogs and fries. So Ali's got here a Wagyu sea seaweed dog. And I have a Wagyu cheese and bacon dog. And we have some type of shim cheery fries. And <laughs> I don't know how you I say that. I think it's called something. 
<laughs> it's, it's called something else, but uh, yeah, I'm gonna try those out. It's supposed those to be are supposed, to be, supposed spicy. to be spicy. I'm gonna take one and Let's try see. it. <laughs> not a little spicy, not that bad. <laughs> well, your face hasn't turned red. That's no. a good sign. Well, let's try this Wagyu cheese hot dog, though. Oh, that was good. Look at all that cheese, bacon. Mm. Mm. That's really good dog. <laughs> Your seaweed dog is going to be good, I think, too. You're not going to try the seaweed dog? No, I'm not going to try it. <laughs> <laughs>